Washington is giving Venezuela's authoritarian leader a stark choice. Allow a competitive election or face economic consequences. So far, President Nicolas Maduro seems to prefer option two, praising his nation's top court for barring his challenger, Maria Corina Machado, and vowing to continue his rule in the oil-rich nation. Nothing is going to stop me. I'm going to continue in the streets. I'm going to continue in battle. I'm going to continue protecting you and to burn them. I'm going to continue governing this country with the support of the Venezuelan people. That stance has consequences for both countries. Maduro, who stands by the decision to disqualify his opponent, will bleed badly needed oil revenue. And his defiance could hasten the hemorrhaging of even more people from what is already the world's worst displacement crisis. Some 7.7 million Venezuelans have fled, many to the U.S., over the last decade. The White House says the Maduro regime promised reforms last year, and it expects follow-through. The Maduro regime made commitments back in the fall about what they were going to do to allow free and fair elections uh, and allow for the active participation of opposition parties. They have until the spring to move forward uh, on those commitments, and we're going to be watching that closely. Maduro loyalists see Washington's demands differently, with head of the National Assembly, Jorge Rodriguez, calling the U.S. hijackers. Machado, who noted that three million people backed her in October's presidential primary, has described the ruling that barred her from the race as judicial delinquency. I represent the popular sovereignty. They cannot hold elections without me and without the millions of Venezuelans who voted that day. Will Washington's pressure campaign work? Or will Maduro dig in on the economic crisis his leadership has created? Analysts aren't sure. We're in a situation where Maduro is getting almost everything he wants while the U.S. in return is getting very, very little, uh, which is very detrimental to the cause of freedom and democracy in Venezuela. Acevedo thinks Washington should push harder and faster. I don't think we should wait. I think uh, they have given Maduro way too many chances and he has not upheld his end of the bargain. I would also reimpose new sanctions, specifically secondary and treasury sanctions against those governments and those regimes who are aiding and abetting Maduro, because that is something uh, that usually does not get enough, enough attention. While Caracas has until April to mull this possibility and set an election date, some Venezuelans will continue to march behind Maduro, and many others will march in the other direction. Anita Powell, VOA News, The White House.